Hello everybody and welcome, Rich here, and today sees the launch of the new season in Rainbow Six Siege, Operation Shadow Legacy on the test servers. And I have been lucky enough to be able to get hands on early with this new season, and there are a lot of very big changes coming. Now unfortunately, while I was capturing gameplay, all of the footage seems to be corrupt for some reason. So what I am going to do with this video is show you the presentation video that Ubisoft showed yesterday, but keep an eye on the big changes, the two big things for me. I think coming out of this new season is one, the new ping system, ping 2.0, and the new reinforcement pool. Do keep an eye out for those in this video, but like I say, definitely watch this all the way through because there are some very big changes coming. Not only the new operator, obviously Sam Fisher. If you do want to see his full loadout, I do have a video uploaded already covering that. Link will be in the description down below. But for now, here's everything coming with Operation Shadow Legacy. In Operation Shadow Legacy, a legend steps out of the darkness and into the light as Sam Fisher comes to Rainbow Six Siege. Armed with a powerful new intel gathering gadget, a deadly new assault rifle, and a gruff demeanor honed over years of fieldwork, Fisher steps into his new call sign, Zero with all the swagger you'd expect from an icon. Perfect shot. But Shadow Legacy is about more than one operator. It's about a whole host of gameplay modifications that will change the way you play Siege. Ping 2.0, new and updated optics, a hard breaching secondary gadget, pooled reinforcements and map ban, plus the match replay alpha phase on the test server are just some of the updates that, along with a rework of the scenic chalet map, will ensure this season has a lasting legacy. Follow this channel to stay current with Siege announcements, and let's get into it. It starts with Sam Fisher joining Team Rainbow as Zero, a medium speed, medium armor attacker. His SC-3000K assault rifle may look familiar to fans of his previous work, and it's right at home in Siege with a variety of optics to suit your preferred style. He can also rock the MP7, and he's got a 5.7 USG sidearm with an integrated suppressor in keeping with his signature stealthy style. Speaking of which, check out the laser sight on his Argus launcher. It doesn't just have the look, it also delivers the goods. Intel. Ready. Argus launched. Always one to use cameras to his advantage, Zero can fire his Argus projectiles into breakable and reinforced surfaces to burrow through and create camera vision on both sides of the barrier. Walls, floors, hatches, and ceilings are all potential peak points for Zero and his allies. And though these two-way cameras can only look in one direction at a time, there's no more versatile way to get a look into a room the defenders don't want you to see. Even if they can't burrow all the way through, Zero's camera projectiles will still stick into most surfaces, opening up a world of possibilities for cheeky new camera placements. And it's not just intel they'll be gathering. Each Argus projectile can fire a single laser to destroy enemy gadgets or deal minor damage to enemies themselves. Zero's gadget is a powerful new tool for the attacking team, so defenders will want to keep their eyes and ears peeled. The projectiles make a distinct sound when burrowing into place and can be easily destroyed with a bullet. Electrified surfaces will destroy the projectiles on contact. Also, mute jammers will keep them from functioning, while Wamai and Jaeger's gadgets will snap up any that fly by. But with so many places to deploy his gadget from relative safety, and so many ways to put it to use, Zero is sure to make his presence felt on Team Rainbow. Now, you may have noticed that some of the pings from Zero's Argus cameras look different from what you're used to. Welcome to Ping 2.0, an evolution of the ping system designed to give you better tools to communicate and coordinate with your squad. Each player will be assigned a numbered ping marker every match, so you know who's calling out what. You'll be able to ping from drones and cameras, and pings will now show contextual information when you point out gadgets, the diffuser, and other objects of interest. Operation Shadow Legacy is a season chock full of improvements like this, so let's run you through a few more. Another area where you may have spotted some changes is the optics on the weapons. 
There are some new scopes and new magnification levels, so look for the classic ACOG to be reinvented as the 2.5X. There are also some redesigned sights, including a new red dot and a new holographic, as well as a general overhaul on which operators have which optics for which guns. Plus, you can now customize the color and opacity of your reticles to see your targets in a whole new light. There's also a change coming on the defender side, as all of the reinforcements will now be drawn from a shared pool. The team will have 10 reinforcements that anyone can use, no matter how many players start the match. This means that a speedy teammate can now secure more than two hatches, and anchors won't have to worry about roamers scurrying off to the far reaches of the map without reinforcing the site. But you'll have to keep a keen eye on those reinforcements, because a new hard breaching secondary gadget means that the attackers now have a new way to bust on through. The gadget will start fusing as soon as the deploy animation is completed, and though it can be interrupted in the usual ways, defenders will now have to be wary of more than just Thermite, Hibana, Maverick, and Ace punching holes in their reinforced walls and hatches. How you defend those reinforcements will change a bit with Operation Shadow Legacy, thanks to an update to Thatcher's EMP grenade. The Electric Blast will now temporarily disable gadgets instead of destroying them outright, meaning the gadgets will come back online once the disable ends. So now, for example, Legion's Mines will simply be revealed, and Bandit's batteries will become non-operational yet remain in place. Attackers will have to time their pushes to take advantage of the disabled state before the defender's utility powers back up, while defenders who like to bandit trick will have to get a little trickier. Fortunately, the Rainbow Six Siege team has been working on ways to help you work on your tricks. In addition to the new My Siege Stats tool on RainbowSix.com, which gives you a deeper look at your in-game performance, the highly anticipated Match Replay feature is coming to the Operation Shadow Legacy test servers for its alpha phase. Load up any of your past 10 matches and watch them through from the spectator camera view or from the perspective of any player in the match. Whether you're analyzing enemy tactics, recording some personal highlights, or answering the evergreen question of how did they get me, Match Replay is one of the most powerful learning tools to come to Rainbow Six Siege. Be sure to use it on the test server and give the team some feedback to help them make it even better. One more thing before we talk about the new map rework, and that's Map Ban. Coming to the ranked and unranked playlists, Map Ban will follow in the footsteps of the Operator Pick and Ban phase to give you a little more control over the matches you get into. And yes, there's a fresh rework coming to that map pool. The Chalet map rework brings some new navigation options to the venerable retreat, notably the ability to repel all the way up and traverse the rooftop. Master bedroom renovations have enclosed the bedroom terrace and added an interior staircase down to the trophy room, while a new basement corridor offers a new rotation route between bomb sites. And beware the new window above the much contested garage door. The snowmobile won't save you from that sight line. The Chalet map rework and all the new features and gameplay modifications in this video will be free for all players at the launch of Operation Shadow Legacy. Sam Fisher, aka Zero, will be unlocked for Year 5 pass holders exclusively at launch, and will be available for everyone else to purchase seven days later with Renown or R6 credits.